Robert Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, June 13th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern. Imagine that you're lying and you can see everything all at once. That might sound a little hard to fathom. You're flying and you can see everything all at once. So your scope of view is everywhere but you're viewing it all at once. It's kind of like a, you have this box that contains all things, everything and everything, and you're watching it. You see things that you really don't, uh, you're, you're not too happy about happening, and you give it some thought on maybe you should change things. Now, we know that we're all very, very, very powerful. It's just that we not are not connected with that yet. And that we're aware of that we can do so many things, but we're kind of like on training wheels to understand and comprehend what those things are uh, that we can engage. And it's so different that with, with ourselves and everything else being connected. So when you, for yourself, when you imagine that you can see everything, you see your whole life, you can see the beginning, you can see the now. All right, you can see the past, you can see everything. Now, here's a question for you. So you're scoping your entire life, your existence so far, okay? And would you really change anything? Or would you be deeply grateful for that which you have so far experienced? Tempting, isn't it? Now, if you were to change something, you would also be aware that you would be altering other things. See what I mean? So it's very delicate when, when the time comes where we can view our existence and review certain things and say, well, I'm going to change this. So I'm going to go in there and, and I'm not going to have that happen or that happen. Now, it seems, okay, so you say, well, okay, so I'm so powerful and everything. Why wouldn't I be able to do that? What, what, would, what would be the issues? Well, the issues would be that anything that you changed of what you have already participated in, done, whatever. It is going to affect that entire time, right, in that moment. It'll affect everything around it. And it not necessarily will it affect a the future that you're in compared to going back and seeing, because you're actually in the past and you're correcting past situations. You know, in the now, there's nothing for you to correct because you're in the moment. But in the past, when we see things that we have done that we say, you know, I'm going to change that. I, I, I'm just not going to have, I, I, I'm not going to have that experience. I'm going to change it. So, and then you're told that your, your higher self, your God says, your, your conscience says, well, you know, if you change that, you realize that there will shift in all directions. And not necessarily creating, you know, 
changing your future by changing the past. Or you say, you know, I'm just very deeply grateful for what I've experienced so far in this life. There really isn't anything that I would ever change because they were all experiences and I continue to experience. To tempting up uh, situation, isn't it? Where you know that, let's just say you know you can change it. But on the other hand, do you really want to? Can you give it enough thought? Through the heart mind. Do I really want to change that? And you'd be amazed what you know what you experience from that. Now a lot of times we'll go through this life and we'll say, Well, I'll tell you what, if I could do that over again. You ever heard yourself saying that? If I could just do that, oh, that one thing, if I could do over again, I wouldn't do a lot of the things that I did the first time. But this is what happens. We get seriously connected to our physical life, okay? And we're separated from our God or spiritual life. So we spend a lot of our time embracing the material and physical life, existence. And when you are with a life, when, when you're in a body, and you're experiencing every second, because we are, so you get into that and you experience many different things as time goes by on this planet. Good, bad, middle of the road, But when you are, you're detached from the external experience, it's not that you're, you're not appreciative or grateful to experience in the body, but you detach from the physical. You enjoy it, but you're not embracing it. You're not clutching it. You know, you don't have attachment to it. This way you become much less serious and you laugh through life with yourself and that's not making a mockery of the life or anything it's basically saying this is a this is a journey in this body it, it, it's an experience and that's all it is it's just an experience but can you see can you feel this in your heart minds a vibrational frequency can you see where we go, we run amok. And you see where we run amok? We run amok when we get too involved, too seriously involved with our physicality. You see? And I don't think anybody disagrees with that because we're all susceptible to it. You know, we, uh, we pick this up and then we begin to realize and say, well, you know, I am really, if you could look outside yourself, okay? So if you could stand on the outside of you and watch how you maneuver in this life that you're in and, and what motivates you, what draws you into certain directions and paths, the physicality draws you. Isn't that true? Isn't it true that it's the physicality that draws you in different directions. It's the physical life that gets us caught up, okay? Gets us into the ego mind, emotionality, over the, you know, ego mind over the heart mind causing emotionality, uh, misguided direction, uh, misinterpretation. Uh, then, of course, we conjure through the ego mind fear, frustration, anxiety, anger. But just for a moment, Picture in your heart minds what it would be like if you just looked at this life as a fun trip. 
just a fun trip. It's filled with all kinds of experiences. And you you choose to go into a body to experience it. You experience the life. But you also know. I know I'm experiencing this life and it's wonderful. I'm deeply grateful for other aspects of it. But as I experience this life, I understand that it is it is just a life. It's it's a, an experience. Life is the highest value in the universe. We know that. So we greatly appreciate housing ourselves in these bodies. And there is no wrong. And there is no right. It is just what you decide to experience. And when, you, when we all end up coming full circle, we begin to realize that you're the driver at first. Then as you become one with your God, you no longer feel the need or the insecurity to drive. You allow your God to drive. You see? And you're, you're along for the ride. Okay, so you're in physical form and the God's driving you through life. That's what I said yesterday, that the God walks with each and every one of us, the God within us. Side by side, we walk through this life. Now, many of us don't embrace that, and that's not a bad thing. We just don't, a lot of people don't embrace that. They don't look, they don't realize that, hey, you know, whether you're in poverty or in great wealth or in between or none of it, you walk with your God, your God walks with you. You have no fear. Your, your confidence or your heart mind is magnificent. You don't have uh, any situation where you're uh, second guessing, uh, you know that you know I'm going to make every single second count in this body. Now, would it make any sense sitting around in that body, you know, for years and years and years, and not really experiencing anything except in the moment, in in that moment that you're breathing? Okay, because we're always experiencing something. What I mean as far as action and moving forward and embracing things, you know? I think that we've been, in a lot of cases, uh, we've been tricked by the physicality of the body. And the ego mind has come in and taken over in a lot of situations. What, you know, people say, well, what, what does it mean when the ego mind takes over? It takes center stage and it, and it leads me instead of me leading it through the heart mind. Well, it means that you get a lot more cantankerous at times. You get more, fr- you get much more frustrated. Uh, you get hurried a lot more. Uh, you you want to push things, push things. Uh, you want to get things. You are pushing things, uh, and and you're not allowing the universe to just let them flow in. So as you push things, you're pushing against all of the opportunities that come to you 24-7. When you're trying to hurry something, you're trying to manipulate something, or you're trying to force it to take place or happen or hurry it up, that you're pushing against all of the flow, the natural flow of abundance that you should be receiving 24-7. And see how the physicality, how being in the body does this to us. Because a lot of people think that the body is it. That's it. That's all. That's what I am. That's what I have is the body. There's separation. It's like, and this is interesting. My mother was a devout Catholic from, you know, long, 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 long time. And she raised all of us kids um, in the Catholic religion. Roman Catholic, catechism, First Holy Communion, confirmation, uh, all of it. And even though she she practiced that faith and, and literally religiously without fail, uh, when the time came for her to leave the body, she was frightened. Is that amazing? So, and, and I I would I told her I said, "There's nothing to be frightened of. You, you live on." You, you, you won't be in that body, this life that you have 
inhabited for over 90 years is it's done it's finished and you're going to move on and you you can choose to inhabit another body or have another life or whatever you desire so she she didn't it, it kind of gave her some comfort but the, it, that fear through the ego was there what's going to happen when i leave the body what's going to happen to me you know what am i going to experience what's out there it's the unknown and the unknown does what what does the unknown do to us it causes us to become fearful because we don't know what it is now while you're in physical form while you're in this body you we spend a lot of our time if we choose only if we choose okay no one's going to choose for you believe me as much as you think in some interests through life that someone chose for you they don't you always are the one that chooses period so in this life that, that, that you're in have we're all inhabiting you learn who and what you are while you're in physical form you learn it you prepare yourself for when the time comes when you decide to leave the body you will know what is out there what your next step is once you're out of the body you're going to know it now we know that knowledge is power and ignorance is evil so if you understand with yourself that you will not diminish you will not be harmed you will not dissipate you will not be over you will continue because you're infinite the spirit within you now the fear is created through belief mechanisms that are instilled in this civilization from i mean come on from the point we enter a baby body to the point where the body matures to a certain extent and then we continue to experience and experience So that's the journey guys while we're in these physical forms to merge the two so that we know we are confident through the heart mind as that we have no fear of after we leave the body and it takes a bit of practice you know it really does and it doesn't matter if you're a yogi a guru you have that fear there's a fear there may not be heavy duty but it is there and it is because there is a process that we take and the process is this the more we become enlightened while we're in physical form the more we will understand with ease the more we become enlightened what is enlightenment enlightenment is detachment enlightenment is no expectations enlightenment is none of the things that we carry with us in this physical form so as we become more enlightened which means that we begin to love more frequently and as we continue to love more frequently we advance ourselves of knowing that hey hmm, this this is good i like this 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 feels natural to love to be in love this is great and i like to do it more and so as you do it more again you continually desire to be in love as much as you can now it doesn't mean there's really nobody on this planet that you can, can sustain being in love for more than a few seconds seriously and i know that might sound strange but it's really true and why is that well it's because we have the ego mind it's because we have not learned nor have we chosen to learn who and what we are okay now if you walk up to your average joe or jane 
and I, I mean average just as a uh, just as a norm, whatever that is. So you you know you have, you have Joe and Jane, and you go up to Joe and Jane, and you say, "Hey guys, how you doing?" You say, "Fine." Are you discovering who and what you are? Have you have you begun to done? Have you begun to do that? And what are they gonna? What they they gonna look at you strange? Usually, yeah. What are you talking about? What 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 are, what are you talking about? Have you discovered the God within you, the pure consciousness? And a lot of people would just have no clue. They think you're tree hugger, new age, or whatever the labels are that they throw out there, you know, then and now. But you realize that you're sitting there and you're saying, is it important that I need to know if someone else has discovered who and what they are? No, not really. What is important? Whatever you decide is. Whatever you decide is important. And what is the importance? What is your importance? What, 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 what do you value? What is it that you, have you asked yourselves, what do I value the most? Now that's a question that's very rarely asked of ourselves. And I'm not, I'm talking about you with you asking yourself and being in a quiet position with no interference and just through the heart mind, what is the, what is the highest value that I have? What is my highest value? Now you'd be surprised how people will answer that to themselves. Some people will say they're homes. Some will say they're vehicles, okay? Some will say they're loved ones. But they very rarely say, I'm not saying they don't say it, I'm saying they very rarely say to themselves, I am, I am the highest value, I am, you see? And reinforcing that without being forced and, and without having to feel that you have to do duty, you do it effortlessly. My highest value in this existence is me. And when you begin to realize that, and you say that, you reinforce it by saying it to yourself, what do you think happens? What do you think takes place? It's a vibrational frequency of deep eternal love. It is being in love when you communicate that to yourself through your heart mind. I am the highest value in the universe. Now that's not belittling anything. It's not meant to be misinterpreted uh, or taking wrong, taken wrong. It is how we view our lives and our gods. And since they're together, how could you not be the highest value in the universe to yourself? How could you not be? And as we begin to move more in that direction of ourselves, each of us, choosing in our own way, in our own direction, where we begin to embrace that more and more. And what does that do? It shifts your whole perspective. It also shifts your perspective towards others. You know, it, 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 it shifts your perspective towards others. Now, it also moves you out of judgment. You don't judge, we don't judge. It is, this isn't about judgment, it's about experience, and it's about knowing ourselves. You know, it's like you're sitting there and you're going, I know that if they serve that cake at this table, I am going to be weak because I want it really bad. And I won't just eat a little bit, I'll eat a whole lot of it. And see, that's knowing ourselves, okay? Then, 
you, 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 you have a choice. You say, oh, it, it's not going to do any harm. Uh, you know, this is a special occasion. How many times have you said that to yourself? This is a special occasion, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and splurge, indulge. And this could not just be food, but anything. Anything. And as you mature, so to speak, with the connection with your God, your kingdom of God, your pure consciousness, you, and, you, and when you ask yourself, what is my highest value? Okay? How, what is my highest value? I am my highest value. And so you look, you will look at things differently, you will approach things differently, and you'll experience things differently. You'll embrace every single step of the way. And you reinforce it by reminding yourself what the highest value is to you. And what does that do? What does that help you with? It assists you to move out of the physicality to detach. Therefore, the universal flow of abundance and prosperity and happiness and joy and great health flows in. Because you're no longer attached. You're no longer holding on to things that you have physically. And it doesn't mean, oh, okay, I'm going to give it all away. It, that's, just, that's not what it means. It means that you enjoy it, okay? You're happy to experience it. And you, it, it's, it's fun for you. It's enjoyable. But you don't covet it, you see? You don't, you don't grab it and drag it with you everywhere. You don't worry about losing it. That's when you have attachments. That's when you have expectations. You, you, you worry about losing whatever it is that you value and that you're attached to and that you have high expectations with. So in this meditation, I am the highest value in the universe. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we desire or want to do is relax our bodies. Relaxing our bodies all the time is so important. Talking to our bodies is if you're talking to your best friend, okay? And, you know, kind of, you're just saying, how are we doing? Okay, let's see if we can't help you over here. All right, we've got this going on, so let's see if we can't help you. And it's amazing what happens because the synergy between you and your body becomes deeper and much more enriched. I kid you not, okay? So when you relax the body, you're saying, body, hey, guess what? Relax. Let's relax. We're going to go into meditation, and that is going to be wonderful you, for you and me. I am the highest value in the universe. And that means your physical body and your God body, your pure consciousness, as one. So you drop your shoulders, because I guarantee you, you wake up in the morning, okay, you get up in go in front of the mirror, and you say to yourself, okay, drop my shoulders. And I guarantee you, the majority of the time, you'll go, wow, my shoulders were tense, and I just got out of bed. You drop your shoulders, you relax the body, you dump all the ballast, all the weight, anything that you've, you've tracked in the last 24 hours or longer. It does not serve you the greater good, the higher good for yourself. Then just let go. Detach from it. You have no expectations of it. You have no attachments. You just let it go. Boom. Falls off. Body relaxes and responds in kind. You know? Hey, thank you, Al. I appreciate that, you know. Great. We were carrying a lot of stuff that wasn't doing me any good, and I know it wasn't doing you any good. So the body relaxes. Then we move into the now. And the now is really all we have. You can never, ever forget that the now is all we have. We do not have the past. People say, well, yeah, we do, because we can reminisce and go in the past. It isn't alive. We can make it alive. No, you've already done that. You experienced it already. 
why would you backtrack over it again when you could create massively new avenues moving forward as you create your future in the moment? Okay? It's hard for us, a lot of us, to just let go of things. It really is. It's just how we've been trained. It's not a negative. It's just it's a difficult thing for so many people just to let go. Emotionally, a lot of things. So in the now, okay, some of us will, we reminisce and we, we have things that like catalysts that, that uh, uh, they remind us, reminisce and, we, and something, a song or something that pulls us into the past. And then we kind of sit there and we smell the flowers a little bit too long. And then we like it and then we keep doing it. I wish I could have this again or I wish I could have that again. I wish I could have that experience again. And see what happens, see how you're doing it? So as you're doing that, you take the past into a future that doesn't exist and you create that future from your past and then you relive the past in that future that you've just created. And then what does that mean? As I've said over and over again, it means that you will end up saying to yourself, I feel like I've been running in circles my whole life. Is it a bad thing? No, it's just a choice. It's an experience. Why would you experience something over and over again instead of creating a future where you can experience every step of the way in the moment, new things? So, we still the ego mind and we still the subconscious mind by being in the now. Because when you just focus on the moment, whatever it is you may be doing, that's all there is in that moment. And how many of us totally ignore the moment and we're wandering off into a future that doesn't exist and a past that's already gone way by. Can you see how that happens? So it, it is imperative that we choose in our own way and direction to stay in the now, in the moment. Doesn't, even, doesn't matter if you're picking your nose. It is in the moment. And then what do we do? We breathe. We breathe in the moment. We breathe in the moment. Period. And the breath literally keeps us in the now. When you forget about breathing, when you forget about breathing, okay, you're not in the now. I know that sounds a little strange, but it's true. You're not in the now. You're somewhere else. But in the now, you literally still the uh, ego mind, you still the uh, subconscious mind, the chatter goes away and you and you move into peace, into the now, and you follow the breath, and follow the breath. And how do you follow the breath? Visualize this, it's very powerful, and it's very effective if we choose to do it. So you visualize your body and you visualize your breath. And the breath you've taken through the nose, nice easy breath in, is divine positive energy. It's pure energy that we breath in. How do you think it sustains our body? It's made up molecular structure of pure energy in different bonding forms. So, visualize your root, your, your, your chakra system as wheels of colored light, okay? vibrant and we take our breath our divine positive energy we start to bring it up through our body we we start with the root chakra the i am our energy our stability our comfort our safety and this is the red wheel of light this is the root chakra then we move to the orange wheel of light the sacral chakra sensuality sexuality pleasure sociability I feel then we move to the yellow wheel of light the solar plexus chakra your strength personality power determination the I do then we move to the heart chakra
chakra. The, the green wheel of light. This is acceptance, love, compassion, sincerity. I love. Then we move to the throat chakra, the blue wheel of light. Communication, expression, creativity, inspiration, I talk. Then we move to the third eye chakra, the violet wheel of light. Intuition, lucidity, meditation, trust, I see. And then finally, we move to the crown chakra, the purple wheel of light. Knowledge, consciousness, fulfillment, spirituality, I understand. Now you bring in, you're bringing this pure divine energy in your breath up through the center of your body, through your wheels of light, your chakras. You bring it up into the back of the head. For a brief moment, you hold it. Just briefly, I am light, I am love, I am. And in that brief moment, you compress it. You pressurize it, condense it into pure liquid frequency, liquid energy. And as you do that, you release it over the pineal gland. And we all know that the pineal gland has been under siege and attack for a very long time. It's just not functioning too well. And in, in some cases, it looks like a prune. I, I choose to have it look like a, a, uh, a rosebud. And as you pour this liquid frequency over it, it begins to expand. It begins to open up. And as a rose does, when you look at a rosebud, you go, oh, well, it's just a, looks like a, a green knot. And then all of a sudden, it turns into this beautiful flower with, with a, just a fragrant aroma. And yet it's immortal as the pineal gland. So we do this repetitively, you know, six times or so. We do it as often as we choose, and we flood the, the pineal gland. And the pineal gland to us is, while we're in these bodies, very important organ, because it is our gateway to all the particles of existence. It's our gateway to pure consciousness. It's our gateway to beyond. So we would like it to be fully functional and vibrant and healthy. And that's why we breathe breath. We do this breathing. Now, we also know that as we breath out, which we have to do, we breath out, and as we're breathing out, we're met with the ego mind. And the ego mind, of course, is there to tell us what to do and dictate to us. And it does it through the, it, it, it goes through the heart mind, so it dictates the heart mind, the emotion. And we become more and more aware that the, uh, the ego mind is there. You say, ego mind, you're not in charge. Please take a seat. I am. And you practice that as often as you choose, maybe 100, 200 times a day. Some people do. More or less. So we don't, we don't follow, we lead ourselves, okay? And the God next to us leads ourselves. So we lead ourselves. We think for ourselves. We govern ourselves. And we all know that we've embraced the understanding that we ask ourselves one question and that question is what is the greatest value? What is your greatest value? I am my greatest value. You say it with conviction through the heart mind. Now, we're merged in a way. We have this body. We have our God, our pure consciousness. We have a heart mind. We have all of these merged into one and knowing that merging and what that merging makes up. And we're also all consciously aware that we are of the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude. And there are others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, and the seraphim. Now, there's trillions of them. Now, they vibrate at a different frequency than we do, and that's why we don't see them like we see each other. But they do come in humanoid form, and they do pass on messages, some very enlightening, some as reminders, and we do the same for them. 
It's just that a lot of us aren't consciously aware that we do. We're one big family in all things, everything and everything. So, the archangels can surround any one of us at any time in the tens of thousands. And the reason they can do that is just because of their vibrational frequency, they can have large number in a small area. And they're consciously aware that they're of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love, the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. And we have the Ascended Masters. Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Hell and Thought, many, many, many more. And these are those who have ascended out of body and hold their God form, their pure consciousness. We are beings who have ascended into body to experience physical form. They've experienced physical form. Okay? Now, there are times that we ascend out of body just like they do. And we house our God form, our pure consciousness. And we're always helping each other. So, three groups of us, three different existences, and then we all are compelled to call as many as we can assemble and gather here in this now, in this meditation, in this forming of circle of light. And we call upon all the light energy beings that are all there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this forming of this circle of light. Now, they're consciously aware, and they have to be in order to be in this meditation, because if they aren't, then their frequencies are too low, and they wouldn't be able to be. So, there are, they come in such vast numbers in the Googleplexes, and one Googleplex fills this universe, they come in trillions of Googleplexes from every direction, from trillions of universes. And remember, universes are endless. And, you know, they are loose. Now, we call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, the dark dead beneath earth. Many, many, many civilizations and species. Now, only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this gathering, in this meditation, in this forming of the circle of light, in this now. And they come in the billions. Then we call upon all the galactics and off-worlders. Just in this quadrant, just in this sector of the galaxy, just in, in this solar system, the rim of the Milky Way galaxy, we have over a thousand civilizations and pieces that come through this way. The world is familiar with a fraction of them. Pleiadians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Syrians, Zeta Reticuli, Feline. Avion, Golden Pyramid, Saturian, Jupiterian, Venusians, many, many, many. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this meditation, in this now, in this forming of this circle of light. They must have a high vibrational frequency. 
but they cannot sustain themselves. And they've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come in the billions. And we also call on our loved ones. All of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes have even have it. Now only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, of deepest eternal gratitude and are consciously aware of this can join us in this gathering and this now and this meditation, this form of circle of life. And they come in the billions. And we also call upon all of the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya. In this now, in this meditation, in this gathering, in the forming of the circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, and deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this gathering, in this forming of the circle of life. And just the name of few of them, because they come in the trillions in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which most we have never seen before. And we have fairies, sprites, the elves, the dwarves, the trolls, the trees, the gnomes, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. And they come, and, and you, you look at the assembly, the gathering, endless numbers literally covering trillions of universes all assembled here to liberate this planet earth gaia aria to lift it into the higher frequencies into a god planet of deep eternal love and gratitude a paradise so all of us arm in arm Hand in hand, all of our gods together, we form a circle of light at the equator of this planet. And that light is so brilliant and so expansive that it grays out the darkness of space. And it would take a billion of the suns in the solar system to compare it to its brilliance, its brightness. Now, we are all in full compassion non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, peace, joy, tranquility, and benevolence. And we are all one. And we are all God. And we are all love. And our god light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. And all of us, the Googleplexes, the trillions, the billions, are of the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love. Now, we begin to ascend above this planet and illuminating everything and as we do we come into this beautiful gossamer field it is everywhere it, it, it has trillions of vibrant colors flickering reflecting and as we enter it we are met with the first column of light which is the emerald green flaming healing light of archangel raphael this reminds us that we were that we are the power of healing 
We're also met with another column, which is the violet, blue, purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. And this column reminds us of our power. It reminds us of our strength, and it reminds us of our resolve. Then as we continue to ascend through this gossamer field, we are met with the column of white fire. This reminds us that we are imbued with the armor of the God of pure consciousness of the white fire. This is the highest of the highest high frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude. It cannot be penetrated by any low dark matter frequencies. They would vaporize coming anywhere near us. But each of us can choose. If we do embrace lower survival matter frequencies or lower dark matter frequency, and we lower our frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude to the extent where our armor is diminished, then they can come in. Now, we also know that we are met with the column of the purple transmuting flame. This will tell us that and reminds us that we can take the purple transmuting flame and we can neutralize all of these lower dark matter frequencies, all of these lower survival matter frequencies in a neutralized substance, and we can send it back to the pure consciousness, the God, where they are no more. We are also met with the violet ray. This is a column that is presented to us that reminds us that we can bring the violet ray right in behind the purple transmuting flame, and we can purify the area where those low frequencies once were. And this restores our field, our white fire armor, into the higher frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude. They were also met with not the least and the most powerful of the golden white, pink light column. This is the column that reminds us of the love that we are, of the beauty and divinity of the value, of the peace, of the joy, of the tranquility, gentleness, kindness, generosity. And we see it in sunsets. It reminds us all the time. The golden white, pink light, we see it in sunrises. We see it all over this planet. Constantly they're reminding us that we are the love that we are the power, that we are the strength, that we are the resolve, and that we all carry the highest of the highest high frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude and the white fire. Now, we look up, and some of us who are carrying physical form decide to step out of body and hover above our physical bodies effortlessly. And as we all continue to ascend, we look and we see this massive column. We created this column. It's larger than the solar system. And we designed it because it, it's opaque and it shimmers like billions of rainbows reflecting in almost like an aura coming off. Colors we would never see here on this planet. And at the top, we designed it so that the entire golden ocean can stream cascade 360 degrees all the way down and flood everyone and everything, everything and everything with the highest of the deepest eternal love and the highest of the deepest eternal gratitude. Now the golden ocean that we experience cascading off of the column, each of us hold a drop of that golden ocean, and each of us holds the essence of that golden ocean. Now, as we continue to ascend, we look a little bit over, and we see our meditative sphere is set center circle. We created this sphere well over two years ago. We started, I think, with maybe I don't know, 10, 15, 50 people maybe? We're 112 million people globally. And I won't even count the ones that are off world. And this sphere continues to intensify, continues
continues to expand because it's filled with deep eternal love and gratitude. The highest high of high frequencies. It can be seen in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. It continues to intensify and it continues to expand because every single day, well over 800 meditations, we have contributed to that sphere's reach. And it floods us all 24-7. If you're ever in a situation where you start moving in lower frequency because of external events, embrace that sphere. Understand what it is. And it floods us all in deep, deep, deep eternal love and the highest of deep, 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 deep eternal gratitude. It bathes us. It saturates us. It floods us. Non-stop. Always. Feel it, because that's what it's doing. And all you have to do is acknowledge it. You don't have to, you choose. And as you acknowledge it, you come into full circle that you are the highest value in the universes. Where you say, I am the highest value in the universes. I am the love. I am the God. I am the one. So it is. And so it shall be. Feel that frequency as you state those words. I am the highest value in the universes. I am the love. I am the God. I am the one. This is an empowering, reinforcing affirmation for each of us to literally practice daily and not through the ego mind but through the heart mind where there is no ego there is no motivation to impress to be something that we're not and to just embrace the gods that we are and to love ourselves and to be in full dress of understanding completely if you ever doubt it move yourself into the higher frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude and then express to yourself I am the highest value in the universes do not become attached do not have expectations and you'll move effortlessly through this life in all of the abundance the riches, the wealth, the happiness the joy, the good health is yours continuously it always has been step out of your own way permanently I join you in the meditation I'll return to close this out
well is at the highest value in the universe. Moving more into enlightenment every second of embracing the love that you are. The peace, the joy, the bliss, the gentleness, the kindness, the generosity, and the humbleness. to yourselves when you say I am the highest value in the universes I am the God I am the love I am the one the pure consciousness take this with you the rest of the day into the evening and night into the following morning practice being who you really are. Practice being the God. Practice being the love. Practice being the one. Practice being at the highest value in the universes. We'll be back here 